Hmm. It's gonna be interesting. Hey there, boys and girls of YouTube world. Today we're gonna see if we can't get a 1967 to 72 Ford four wheel drive running. She's uh she's in here tight. Looks so we got a four-row corn head in the way. Trees growing around it. Trees going behind it. I think we're gonna have to go backwards out of here. Hopefully this thing's as good when we get it out as it looks here. This ought to be fun. Look at them rough rider. Country mud flaps. If you complain about farmers. Don't talk with your mouth full. Furnished by First National Bank and Trust, Ellendale, North Dakota. Oh, she's only been off the road 18 years. Jimmy Spender sucked me up on this deal because he felt so bad for screwing me over on that International. Where, yeah, where's your Spenders at? What do you think, Duff? How are we gonna get this out of here? Should have brought a clevis with. I think I better bring the chainsaw. Oh boy. Because it's gonna scrap the side. All right, chainsaw time. Whatever you're rolling in, it's probably dead and stinky, so quit it. Yeah? Oh yeah, it's a skunk. Guess who's right in the box? Oh, now we're in trouble. I just tightened it up at home. You got a 13 and a screwdriver? Not a mechanic. Oh yeah, right. Oh hey, we better put the electric fence up. Where's it in? Nobody knows. Hell you got you got eight thousand dollars worth of wood here. <laughs> and three oh, miles yeah. up. Electric fence. No, oh, I cut the wrong one. <laughs> Go grab that other chainsaw, see if you can get that one to break too. Yeah, no, I know. I'll let you run your own and break your own. Which way do I go? Oh, you got it. You're a good boy. It growed into the mirror. And look at that. The mirror is still broke. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna go enjoy a sandwich while Jimmy Spenders throws logs. No, you're throwing them. I'm throwing the little ones. How many trees are you supposed to be cut out of here? We must cut at least a dozen. I don't know about your new friend, Duff. Seems like a bad influence. You guys are terrible. Oh, where did you find all the mud? Oh, don't shake by me. Okay, throw some trees. Jimmy Spenders thinks I should be uh, Paul Bunyan throwing all these trees and he's leaning on the blue ox trying to rub the paint off the fender. You just keep an eye on them dogs. I'm gonna put some wind in these tires. I'm out of wind. That's a lot of work. Should have Jimmy blow these things up. He's gotta be full of hot air. Oh, there's a little water in there. That's like wheel weight for uh oh hopefully that uh, cow carcass don't poke a hole in our tire now that we got it pumped up. That one's up. She's a true survivor. West of 281. White letters out, cowboy things. Ooh, this one's a timber line. No white letter on the front one. She's a delta. Oh, well, none of them have the cap, so clearly they leaked before they parked it. Instant poor man's lift kit. Pump up your tires. Make sure she's out of gear. Broken shovel, you know, always save that stuff. Keys are in it. 
Good job holding that fender down. How are we gonna get that out of there? What do you think about uh, grabbing a tractor and scooting it out of there with a tractor? I can go get a tractor. See, he's got a front wheel. Right back there. Yeah, we gotta back out here anyway. I'm not really good at walking. <laughs> Too many of them uh, white cups full? No, I got bad back surgery. Well, if we were gonna get this international chisel plow out, we'd, uh, we'd really be in trouble. <laughs> I remember when that worked. Do you now? Well, I'm old. Do you remember when you had to fend off dinosaurs at night? Oh, well, I'm a lot closer to 70 than I am to 60. Words, words of Wisdom by Jimmy Spenders. Don't have my teeth, but well, I ain't had none since I was 20 years old. Sex rots your teeth. <laughs> does, it, does it count if it's with yourself? Well, no. <laughs> All right. You gotta, Let's go get a tractor. You know how to run this thing? Yep. Yep. You need me to boost you up there? Yep. I wonder what that's for. Wonder what that two by four is for? No. That roach clip? Yeah. Well. If the air conditioning don't work, plug it into the red one. <laughs> uh, West the 281 cowboy thinks. Well, it doesn't have nothing to do with starting it. Does he know how to run the loader at least? Wonder what that uh, ratchet strap is holding the roof of the cab on. A little, little shaky in there, Jimmy. Just don't run into the box side. Well, we got her around the hitch. Ready, Lee? Yeah. And uh, he's got a chain link kind of just bolted in the bucket. I don't know how much I like that. So we're just gonna stand back. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now if Jimmy could find reverse, I suppose I should go move the pickup. Oh boy. What a rodeo this is. He's being pretty brave with that bolt in that bucket. I don't know if that's gonna hold up to the shear forces that are being applied to it. He says he wants me to steer. Or he's dancing, we can't figure out which. So we got a new debacle. I think the rag joint broke. Cause that ain't supposed to do that. I don't know what he's gonna back into over there. Well this just got a whole lot more interesting. Oh hey look, 51 or 52 Ford. Big truck. Oh, that's a tough tailgate. Doing real good, Jimmy. Real good. I don't know, I'm standing back there like I'm gonna do anything. Hit the brakes, maybe. Pretty good looking pickup. Oh, she's had a little body work done in this corner. I think he wants to get her straight with the world. There ain't a whole lot straight in uh, Jimmy Spender's world, though. Let's get Babe the Blue Ox over here and get this sucker loaded. Might be fun without steering. Duff, I got a bone for you. You're busy with Daisy playing in the mud. Oh, she's got a whiskey dent there. Let's see what's going on with that steering. Oh, look, they left you a nice little notch in the grill guard to uh, maybe get the hood open. Oh, well, there's our steering dilemma. I didn't do it. This is why we can't have nice things, Jimmy. I didn't do it. 390 or 360. See? Well, I don't, you can't tell on a Ford because Ford sucks. Where'd you do it? So grab that fan, see if she turns over. The moment of truth. Let's see if you screwed me over on another rig. Oh boy. I did screw you over. Well, I'm not strong though. Strong smelling. You're here. like you're like Paul Bunyan. You try it. Oh man. How the fan goes, but the engine didn't. Perfect. Well. This guy, what was this guy's name? Lloyd. Lloyd. Oh dang it! I already had a '55 Ford named Lloyd. Did you guys find some more swampy water? Well, you, you shouldn't be. How do you get it on the top of your head, but not your back? You're special. We're gonna make like a tree and leave. 
Bora! Bora! Well, I suppose we should probably uh, work on that third, huh, Duff? Well, Puddin' up here, he's bashing on my skid steer. Saying we're taking the easy route out. What's wrong with doing it easy, you know? Some of us gotta work a full-time job and then come home and do this, so anything to make it quicker. The old skidder, she's handy, ain't she, Duff? Doesn't have a cure egg maker in there, but, ooh, look at that! A sandwich holder? Yeah, that's right. Collector's edition. Oh, it even keeps them nice and cold. Oh, I should really get this thing detailed, though. No radio either. We didn't splurge for that, but we do have AC. That's what keeps the sandwiches cool. Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. Look at this. You just push this button, and the door goes up. Ready? How neat is that? How neat is that? Then we push this. Oh, that engages the boost. Woo! Yep, tow roll ain't got nothing on this thing. Hands-free camera control. Oh yeah. Nothing but the finest here in Ford's gear repair. Look at the headliner in it. Doesn't even look like it was in a knife fight in downtown Chicago like the old Torola. He does have one thing on us though, he's got tinted windows and these things are kind of a bugger. You know, they get dirty. This time of year we get a couple hours of sunlight. It won't be so bad in a couple of months though. Enough about how great this skid steer is. Let's get this Ford shoved inside. Let's see that uh, Torola pull a half ton four wheel drive with a bum wheel around. Then we'll talk, but. Oh, did I mention it doesn't have any steering either? That's right. And I don't have to get anybody to jump in there and steer it for me. With my help ain't got no thumbs. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Ooh, look at that tire. Ew. So did some digging. Apparently this thing's called Prairie Yellow. I think it gained a bunch more dents since we had it sitting here. And some more uh, lichens growing on it. Look at that handy dandy antenna. I bet that was his FM conversion. Fix the tow mirror for him. Uh, we'll get that later. I think that's Wimbledon White, maybe. Full length running boards. Factory Ford lockouts. That's how you know. It says Ford on them. How neat is that? That's pretty neat. Factory hubcaps. I didn't even notice the uh, fog lights until I was hooking the chain up there. This thing's only been off the road for 18 years. And it's a Ford. So it should pop right off. Ooh, look. Pills. Perfect. Those are our favorite. Candy is dandy. Won't rot your teeth. Hmm. Not a problem South Dakota has. I'm on that. Air conditioning. Yeah, we probably should have finished cleaning this out before it got all soggy. At least we got a shovel to do it with. My uh, quick clamp on the Rough Rider Country mud flap held that on there. Oh, that's right, we are missing a hubcap. Let's see if we can scrounge one of those up. It's got the fancy tow bumper. If you complain about farmers, don't talk with your mouth full. Furnished by First National Bank and Trust, Ellendale, No Dakota. Flying pigs. And uh, cows with uh, hula dresses on. Oh, if you aren't familiar with these Fords. Oh yeah, these, these aren't actual lights, they're just reflectors. That's kind of silly. I don't know if the orange Ford has those. Does the orange Ford have those, Duff? Go over and check it out. I think there's a rabbit over there. Okay, or not. Oh yeah, the tailgate handles, they don't lift up on these. They swing out. Weird Ford things. 
So we gotta put a tube in that because we don't like flat tires. I don't know, must have had some type of tank back here and that was the plug for it. Spare tire bracket over there. Oh boy, Duff. Well, come over here and check it out. This thing, she's ripe. Oh man, but look at that seat. Dang. Dang. Oh, it does have the gun rack. It's even a triple holder. Oh, there's a lot of stuff back here and a lot of mouse poop. What's this? His rain flicker? Does it have his name? Oh, come on, have a name on it. Oh, she's breathable though. Fat guy in a little coat. Fat guy in a little coat. Oh, that'll do. I'm gonna start wearing this when I do my pressure washing videos. Instead of taking my clothes off like our Oklahoman pal does. What other kind of good stuff we got in here? Is this the old stuff with DEET in it? Unscented, well that's no fun. Thought that was an animal for a second. He was all about the calendars. Got the O2 model in here. What's this? Oh, a pop rivet tool? Sweet! There was so much mouse nest in here that it's uh, leaking out the edges. Awesome. As you can see, somebody's had to pry this open many a times. Well, for cheese and rice, open the door. You keep on knocking, but you can't come in. Keep on knocking, but you can't come in. <laughs> Okay, we're just not gonna know what's in there. This guy was clearly a pill popper. Nope, Johnson's baby powder. Oh, nope, it's full of Hoover Schneef though. Son of a biscuit. Who wants to do a line? Place water? Bet one swat and that thing's annihilated. Didn't even make a full swat. Oh! This is the stuff that Joe Rogan takes. That keeps you from getting the Rona. Just kidding, it's nails. It's not Invermectin. The largest radiator cap known to man. This thing comes blue. Somebody must have swapped her out. CB radio? Dang! Breaker Breaker 1 9. This is a rubber duck. Oh, maybe that's that's a good name for this thing. The rubber duck. This thing is she's a dirt ball. Let's uh get the hood open. What do you say, Duff? You gonna do it? No. Well, he said it was a 360. And uh, we're just gonna take the word for it. Well, it's got the heater shut off valve, straight off the spigot. This is the air compressor. It's uh, running that air hose back there. I'm guessing that's how you turn her on. I don't know what that one, why does one switch go up and down, one left and right? Who knows? Got some spare 50 cal ammo in here. I'm gonna get this thing open. Like so. Oh, makeshift funnel. With rag inside, type F automatic transmission fluid. Well, it's a manual transmission, so that means the power steering is probably leaking. And 10W30 engine oil. 916s? Yes! I hate when they're like a 5 ace or 13, something you never use. Like a 3 ace. We might need that, so we'll just put that back. Remind me when it breaks down on the side of the road and I need a uh, 3 ace on the test drive. But those are in there. Just scream real loud at the uh, screen you're watching me on. Power steering. Manual brakes, no air conditioning, but it does have an air conditioning compressor up there. What do we got for coolant? Hey, it's green and it's existent. That's plus. Jimmy, where's the dipstick? <laughs> if I were a Ford, I would put it in the most inopportune position. Sure enough, let's hide it back here behind this thing. There's our broken uh, swivel joint for the steering. Swivel joint, rag joint. Coupler, steering coupler, whatever you call it. It's a lot of oil. Like, where's the line at? Oh, it ain't too much over the line. Just a half inch. It smells like fuel. Somebody probably tried starting this thing. Yep. 360 CID, right there. What does it turn? Okay. Hmm. Not really turning. I gotta get this jacket off. This thing's gross. So based with our last experience on an FE, which this is, a 360, I don't know what FE stands for. I probably do know. Ford Engineering? Whatever. We're gonna pull the valve covers off because if it's really rusty under there, we're gonna take the rocker shafts off. 
Because we don't want to bend any push rods like we did on the last one. Ah, oh, shoot, did it. Because these rocker arms are stuck, it bent the push rods. Oh. So we, uh, we screwed it up. Silly Fords. Well, yeah, that comes off. Yeah, rusted. Oh, they welded a bung on there to go to the air compressor. So he's pulling filtered air into the air compressor. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, I don't know about these ProTech filters. The mice sure like them though. Little house, little fecal matter. Kind of rusted through there. I'm sure none of that got into the carbonator. It's gonna be stuck. For oh yeah, it's stuck. Dang it. Somebody's gonna get mad because I didn't cover that carburetor, but we already know that carburetor. She needs some love anyhow. So I don't think we heard anything. What do we have? Behind door number two. Oh, for cheese and rice. So look at this. There's no way to get in there. One thing is that PCV, which goes through there, which had the hose plugged in. So riddle me this, Batman. How the French does that much crust get stuck in the top end of these engines? It's always these Fords, too. Always the 360s, the FEs and the Y blocks, and the Chrysler 318s. Small block Chevys, they don't do this. They, they look better than this when you don't have valve covers on them. Get the air hose out, pull the stuff out of the valve train, and we'll fire it right up. Well, I guess let's see what the other side looks like. I'm sure it's not gonna look any better, even though that side was plugged up too. What's it look like after we blow it off? You always wanna have your sandwich in your hand so that the debris doesn't get in there. You don't want them to be any grittier than they already need to be. Look at that, good as new. Just blew her off quick and hit her with some coil. Just kidding, that's all gonna come apart. On oh, a positive note, none of those are bent. Well, we might as well let these valves soak for a bit. Cause I'm sure none of those are stuck. All right, it's behind door number seven. Place your bets. I'm betting crappy. Just like the last one. Cause why wouldn't it be? What? The French toast. This one actually looks really good compared to the other side anyhow. Those back two cylinders look real good. Second cylinder, not bad. Front cylinder's got a little bit of chewiness going on. So why is that other side so bad? It was all sealed up. I just don't get it. Clean engine's a happy engine. Guessing we're gonna need to take these out. They don't look all too bad. I don't get a little crap in there. Like it melted the electrode, but that one had a little humidity in it. The rest don't look bad. What are the odds the other side looks anywhere close to that? While we're over here, let's uh, spray those cylinders down with some oil. This side doesn't look too bad either. Little humidity in those two. Not bad though. Well, I guess there ain't much left to do now, but throw a battery in there. See what happens. What do we got for a battery this week? Looks like I got a never start stashed away on my last trip to the big city here. You got it. Still looking for a battery sponsor. These things are like freaking candy around here. They just disappear. Which way do we gotta go? 
Should we clean those up? Nah. No smoke. That's a good sign. Get the old loser switch out. What are the odds it does anything more than click? It's kind of what I figured. She's stuck. So what are we going to do? Pry bar on the crank? Seems like these Fords you can never get at the flywheel. Maybe we'll take a peek at that. Or I guess we could always make a MVP tool for one of these. Because we had such good luck with it the last couple times. Breaking harmonic balancer, keyways. Oh yeah! Oh no! What's turning? This thing's only been sitting for 18 years. With an air cleaner and a hood. Frickin' Fords. We just got a Rambler running that's been sitting for 40 years. Well, son of a biscuit. She's got an inspection cover down there, so I think we'll jack her up in the air. Put stands underneath it so we don't die. And uh, pull that cover off. Watch all the mouse poop fly out of the inspection cover. Because I usually like to make homes there as well. And uh, put a bar on it. See if we can't get it turning over underneath that way. Also looking for a hoist sponsor. Well, no, no, so much a hoist sponsor. Somebody to buy us a shop with taller sidewalls so we can let this one go back and uh, lose it, whatnot, and get a hoist. That would be nice. That'll be the day. Until then, let's jack her up. Safety third. You don't want those never starts getting away from you. Look at this. Thanks to the uh, Loyal Patreon followers, members, subscribers, supporters. Our uh, IR air hammer took a dive this weekend. Got a new one here. Best 45 bucks ever is these things. Of course, I had to see what was wrong. I don't know what this is called, but whatever that hits against is uh, wedged in there. And it ain't coming out because I tried, so. She's going in the scrap. Because that thing's like the right hand man there. Use that thing all the time. Great investment. Get yourself one of those things. So what kind of goodness we got going under here? We got a clickety clack inline pump and a filter. Oh, and somebody swapped the transmission. They uh, cut the Tranny cross member out with a torch. And then just unbolted it there. Oh, that's, that's handy. What's this? Oh, it's just a single speed Dana 21. I don't know. Two piece drive shaft, breasted out muffler with a nest. There's the air tank with air compressor held in with a big ol' Chain from an implement. I mean, why not? Typical Ford 9 inch with a leaking pinion seal and an oily mess. So, why are you locked up? Here's our inspection cover we'll be removing shortly, folks. Is that it? Yep. Hey! Look at that. No mouse house. And all the teeth are there, South Dakota. That looks surprisingly decent in there. I bet they put a clutch in, and that's when they pulled all this out and butchered that up and cut the rivets and put bolts in. Cowboy things. But uh, I don't know if it's rear main leaking or what, but she's kind of greasy in there too. Let's put a bar on it, see if she'll budge. Oh, son of a biscuit. You are not gonna cooperate, are you? So I can knock my own teeth out. Oh! Why do we do this to ourselves? Oh! She ain't budging, folks. What do we do? I suppose. I'm sick of pulling heads off. But you gotta do it. Otherwise, everybody says, You're a quitter. You're a millennial. You're a hack mechanic. You don't know what you're doing. That engine was perfectly fine. Just like everybody yells at me, you gotta soak it. If you soak that engine, if you soak it in kerosene, 
Atrazine, Flintstone Vitamins, A&W Root Beer, Milky Ways, Dairy Queen Blizzards, Diesel Fuel, ATF. It, all, it eats the rust, eats the rust straight out of there. Will you show me a real stuck engine like this and it does that? Go make a video. Point me to it. And even if it does get loose, it's they're, they're junk anyway because the rings are stuck and then they won't fire anyway. Like Cadillacs and Y blocks. The only thing that runs after it's stuck is a flathead. Fight me on it. So, I think I'm just going to put some more croil in there. Come back. Let me think about it. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll see you again yet tonight. All right. I'm going to go grab a sandwich. After I hit these with some croil. Well, let's clean up this mess. Since we're waiting for the engine to soak. I think I'll get a trash can and we'll recycle the cans. And uh, I got a rock pile. Because that's what we do up here in Podunk is make piles of rocks. And then we'll throw some of this in the iron pile. And the rest can go in the trash can. You know, because we're all about recycling. I'm going to go grab a trash bag and a trash can. And a bin for everything else. Great. We pressure wash them before we know it. Son of a biscuit. Glad it came with that shovel, that was handy. Until the handle broke off. Found a couple holes in the floor, which is not surprising as much crap was in there. When you're gonna park your vehicle in the weeds, don't fill the back end full of dirt and other crap. Right, Duff? But we didn't get much scrap out of there. We filled, I don't know what these things are. 35 gallon? What is that, Duff? That's a lot of trash. It's heavy. And then half that bag full of cans again, so. You're welcome, Greta. You know, just. The three R's, like they taught us in uh, fifth grade, one of the years that I was in that class. Reduce, recycle, reuse. You were more into the dare class. You like that McGruff feller and such. Don't do drugs, kids. All right, I need a sandwich after all that hard work. How about you, you need anything? You good? Water? Treat? Give Duff a treat. Oh yeah. He knows the T word. What are we gonna do next? We could uh, fix that. Sweet Rough Rider Country mud flap before that falls off. Maybe we'll stick the old boroscope, borophil, chlorophyll. Chlorophyll? More like borophyll. In the uh, cylinder holage. See what's going on in there. Maybe it's not going to loosen up. What do you think? I think we're going to have to get it loose because otherwise you guys get mad at us. Nobody likes quitter duff. Well, somebody borrowed our boroscope. So we can't uh, probe in the engine for you guys, so we're going to fix the mud flap. What do you think about that, Duffskers? You know? All right. Let's do that. Drove the old short bed for the first time today. Well, to work. Hey, look, no puddles underneath it. That's handy, huh? Then we made it back. Looks good. Uncle Teddy would be proud. Duff, even if we can't get this thing to run, we at least need it to steer. You're not interested? All right. So here's our rag joint. Basically those splines go on the steering sector, steering box, if you will. And they're uh, held in place by that bolt. And then these two bolts 
line up to the bottom of your steering shaft. And even if this rag joint fails, this rubber, steering coupler, rag joint, whatever, these two pegs are supposed to catch it. So it'll just have a bunch of slop in it, but. Somehow, our shaft snuck by all that and uh, just kind of flopped around down here. So we gotta take those two bolts out up here on the steering shaft that would have went through the rubber before she blowed it out. You don't want a blown out rubber, kids. Ask your parents why. And then we gotta take that cross bolt out of the coupler. I'm gonna get a light though. Put a little light on the subject. Got the old cyclops on the call. Whoop, oh, 12 point. How neat is that? So you can see the splines here, and then there's that groove. And that groove is where the bolt's gotta sit, so. Make sure you get it slid in far enough, otherwise that bolt ain't gonna go in. Make sure you take the bolt all the way out, or it ain't gonna slide off. I don't know why it is, but these usually have a 12 point bolt on them, originally. Of course this Chinese replacement does not. I wonder if that's the same thread. I think they put that in there so that people don't Accidentally take that off. Maybe I don't know if you know why they use a 12-point bolt here and nowhere else on the vehicle Let me know So we're gonna put the 12-point back in there cuz I Think that's pretty handy That's definitely a bolt you do not want coming out on you going down the road That'll make your brown eye pucker if you know what I mean. Usually these bolts are two different sizes. Well, the bolts are the same. Well, the threads are a 5 16 on one and a 3 8 on the other on a GM, so it'll only go together one way. But I've never done one on a Ford. Looks like they're the same 5 16 threads on both of them. So I suppose it'd be easier to get the steering wheel 180 degrees off on a Ford. So see these pins that I was talking about and these notches in the uh, column side of the coupler? So yeah, if this rubber ever breaks like it did, those pins are supposed to go through this uh, end of the coupler so that you're going to have a lot of play and it's going to be noisy and you're going to get, but you'll get off to the side of the road safely. There you go. And you can see how that thing kind of flexes as it turns. And it's rubber, so it obviously breaks down over time. Now you know. How far off is it? Wheels are pretty close to straight. Duh! 50-50-90 rule. 50-50 odds? You're wrong. 90% of the time. Wheels upside down. We ain't fixing it. Not until it runs anyhow. Guess what we got back? The schlong. This should be... Oh, she's gone forever. Hepatitis C you later. Hepatitis, see you later! I would think this would be the good side. That piston looks real good. Is that rust? That one looks good. Yeah, a little rust in the cylinder walls over here. Oh yeah, she's a little... Ooh, she's chewy down there. Dang it. This is the side. I don't know what to do. A little bit of croil on at the bottom. Yeah. A little crud and a little croil down there. I think this one was like right to the top. With something. Yeah, I think that's all fur in that cylinder. The boots with the fur. There's our problem. And this one is freaking spotless. Oh, wait. Go to where you want to. Now there's a little bit of rust down there. So it's all in that cylinder. Yuck. What are we supposed to put in there? Vinegar? That's what everybody says. Well, guess what? 
The internet asked for it. We're doing it. Mixed up a fresh batch. White lightning. Yeah, don't even run in there. What the French toast? Oh man, Puddin says it stains your floor of your shop too. Suppose we got her full yet? It ain't really running down. Well, there's no warning label on it, so... 100% satisfaction guaranteed. We can always write the good folks at uh, Dolgen Corp LLC in Goodlitzville, Tennessee, if this doesn't get my engine loose. It's not a significant source of saturated fat, trans fat. You don't want it up in your transmission. Cholesterol, dietary fiber, vitamin D, calcium, iron, and potassium. So there's that. Well, the thing must be full. You can see some of the white chewiness running out already though, so that's maybe good. What the hay? Let's uh, put a dab in all of them. This stuff better work. Just had to ride horse for two days to get this stuff. We must have used that stuff at Easter because the smell of this reminds me of dying Easter eggs. But you need about three quarters of a gallon of white lightning in here to fill up a 360 block. We got her good and full. It's running out of just about every cylinder now. I'll pet you with the hand that I didn't spill it on. What do you think, Duff? Is it going to work? I don't think so either, but as for the lube tube fans, we're going to give her a shot. So. We're going to punch out, and tomorrow it's just going to miraculously fix itself. And my oil pan's going to be all full of white lightning. What do you say? Sandwich time? I concur. Better seal this up and save it for the next stuck engine. We're back! White lightning sat in the cylinders of this thing overnight, or was dumped in the cylinders last night. Let's see if it's still in there and if it did anything. It does look like... There's a bunch still in the cylinders. Except for that front one. That was the chewy one right there, so. My concern was that it was gonna run right past the rings, cause that's what usually happens when I put coil or whatever else in there. Uh, the rings don't seat that well, so it just kinda <whistles> shimmies on by there, and uh, it's not really gonna do anything if it slides right past, so it's gotta stay in there, I'm guessing, to do whatever it is that white lightning does in the cylinders. It does look like it's down on the front hole. Oh. I don't know what Ford calls that. I would call that cylinder number two. It looks like all of them are full except for cylinder number three on this side, so. Duff, should we stick the uh, schlong down there and see what we can see in that front hole? I don't remember what this one looked like. I didn't think it was too bad. And of course, uh, it still doesn't look too bad. Maybe it's doing something in there. But you can see that cylinder is full of white lightning, as is that cylinder. And we're not gonna stick the schlong down in that goo. You don't want the goo on the schlong. I read it in the owner's manual. Let's go check out the other side. What do we got? And cylinder number three. I don't know that it did anything since it ran right past the pistons. Inconclusive. I don't know. Should we try uh, hooking the battery up and see if the starter blasts crap all over? Let's not stand in front of the cylinders in case it does go. It's not going to go though, is it? You're in the line of fire. You don't want to get hit by lightning. Had a boy. Stay there. Good dog. Here goes nothing. Literally nothing. It can't be a bad connection because we tried prying on it with a bar before and it wouldn't turn. Definitely out of gear. No bueno. So I guess go underneath with a bar, see if we can't get a bigger bar on there. Really don't want to take this thing apart. There's really not a good spot to pry on with a big bar, but we'll have to uh, figure something out, I guess. Can we get a big bar in here anywhere? Well, 
I guess that's the angle it's going to be. Not even budging. We've uh, exhausted all avenues, so the whammer hammer is coming out. That's probably a really bad idea. I mean, it is a really bad idea, but here we go. Let's see if we can't knock some teeth off. It moves a little bit. I think it's just moving the amount of play that's in the rod bearing on the particular cylinder that doesn't want to move. Which I'm guessing is the second cylinder from the front on the passenger side. Just taking a shot in the dark here. She ain't budging. I think we're gonna have to tear it apart. I didn't want to keep going. I mean, it is moving a little bit, but like I said, I think it's just in the rod bearings. And we could keep going, but as soon as we break off some of these teeth, uh, then we're gonna have a mess because then we gotta split the tranny too. And at that point, we might as well just pull that engine out and find a different engine. We're gonna have to put the whammer hammer away. I was looking at the floors while I was laying here pondering my life choices and that's the carpet. She's a little, a little soft. A little soft with the cab support up there. Not too bad though. That cab support's good. Now he's rot out on the back of the cabs right here. Oh yeah, she's a little soft. And it did have a fuel tank on this side too. And of course they mounted that with uh, some chains and brackets as well, but they must have taken that out when they put the sweet air tank in here. Mounting things with chains. West of 281 things. Really nectar down there. We have to take that out, get all the horsepowers if we can get it loose. So yeah, that clickety clack, there was a one in the box and that one looked kind of newish so oh it's made in usa even oh she's a real good one am gauge solid state electronic memphis tennessee yeah here must be the diverter valve i think that's from the back tank that's from the main tank and the cab this goes to the other side and then this feeds the one on the inside and you can see this one is about ready to break off from that passenger tank that hasn't been there for years yeah here's where they like to rot out this is where the back of the cab wraps down between the cab and the box oh there's even a drain plug on here oh look at those nice welds in there real nice okay well yeah this side of the cab sports a little rusty that's dirt floors are about the same and that cab support is on its way out. Let's uh, go pull an engine apart, I guess. Just what I wanted to do today. So before I went up top, started ripping her apart, I decided to take the exhaust bolts off. And uh, surprisingly, the three that I can get at all came right off. So maybe this thing does want to come apart. These two weren't so hard to get at. I should be able to get at the other one from the top side over there. There's our uh, California car recharger right there looks like that's a little rusty so when somebody rebuilds this engine they should uh, put a new one in there that one's actually not too bad to get at surprisingly but I did notice somebody's done a little brake work got a little coupler there and then one right there not more than six inches apart you know don't just make a new line throw $20 worth of fittings at it classic all right, on to the fun stuff up top. So, there it is guys, um, White Lightning was not doing anything to whatever that is. I think it's chunks at the top of the piston. So there you go, that's what I think is soaking stuff. 
If you throw something in there that's going to dissolve stuff like that, it's probably going to tear the hell out of everything else. So then you're just going to have a mess. Also, this might have been where some of the mess was coming from. Our uh, friends decided to move into the tailpipe. Maybe I should leave that in there for when uh, this thing fires right up after we get it loose and get compression and spark. I'm not a fan of pulling the head without the intake. In fact, I don't even know that I've see ever seen anybody do this successfully and put it back together and run. These frickin' intakes, they're like the heaviest thing on any V8 overhead valve engine. The heaviest heads ever, just obnoxious. I think they weigh as much as a small block Chevy. I don't have gaskets, so I was trying to tear it apart as little as I could. As you can see, I had to take the bolts out on that side so that I could get it to come off these dowels. Yeah, now I guess to clean it up and see if we can get it turning over. I don't want to take the other side apart because I'm pretty sure that that's our culprit right there. But we'll see how these other three cylinders look. And if they look chewy, then those ones are going to be looking chewy. There is one over there that's eh, kind of. I think if we get that one loose, there might be a chance. So let's get the shop vac and do shop vac things. That job really sucks. Dad jokes. So, over a nice uh, soda with something else in it. I uh, had one of them things. Tiffany? Yeah, Tiffany. We had her. And uh, she said, what if you make a plate with four holes drilled in it that match up with the head bolts and then a hole in the middle and you put a bolt through it and you just ramrod that SOB right into the top of the piston. That'll move it. Or maybe put something in between the piston in there. This is like 10 gauge. It's the thickest material I had. But we can get some uh, cheesy angle iron and something and maybe beef it up too. So we got all the pudding fabrication supply shop stuff out. You know, with the tape measure, square, center punch, whatever those things are that punch the hole in the center of the hole. So I'm going to go run her over to the bandsaw, trim that up, and then we'll go over to the drill press, and we'll drill these five holes out. You guys get what I'm saying? Head bolts here. Big ginormous 5 ace bolt there. Tighten her down, weld the nut on there, ramrod right into the piston. What do you think it's going to work? Neither is or it isn't, 50-50. So, uh, a little fabricating. Nothing fancy going on here. Just got a little plate we're gonna put on top of the piston because we don't want to ruin that nice piston, you know. So, I forgot to bring the camera over. Uh, things happened, like this plate that I had sitting on top of the piston. That got bent. Uh, one of the things that didn't happen was the engine turned. And this plate got tacoed pretty bad too. So, yeah. Well, we put it in the press and throw some more gussets at it. Or what the heck we do? Get a bigger plate. We were kind of running out of thread. The other thing I was thinking was maybe if we get some 5 ace ready rod. So we got some more threads maybe. I don't know. How do we keep that thing from moving? I guess throw some more material at it. Came up with a name, it's a pretty crappy one, the MPP, the Mortsky Piston Pusher, but it's more like the MEP, or MEF, Mortsky Epic Failure. So I guess we'll throw her in the press, try to straighten it out, and uh, throw some more metal at it. That's a lot of pressure. I think that thing's like 1,400 foot-pounds. It's the BDBH, she's a big dog. But yeah, that thing did not budge. 
All right, less talking, more working. All right, Dusky. Man, that's got her pretty dang straight. So I don't know if throwing any more heat at it's gonna help. Or we need more material. We might have to have some more of that cola concoction and think about our life decisions. I know for sure I need some weld in there and there. Yeah, we need to get it out closer to the edge. Wants to push up there. So maybe we gotta put some gussets in between there. Or do we need to bridge it? I wonder if Bridget knows any more than a Tiffany. Attempt number two with the MPP. I don't know if the washers are gonna help. I was hoping they had big enough washers to go across that bridge there, but I don't. You guys can see the plate and then that other piston. Let's see what moves. Running on the threads. There's a lot of pressure in there. Nothing seems to be moving either. So I stuck the two push rods in there. And the one on the right, this one, looks like it's up higher. So that tells me it's the exhaust valve. So either it just starting its way back down or it's just about all the way to the top I'm trying to figure out which way if we crank on the starter which way we gotta pry on the flywheel so that we're not fighting against that bolt you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna whack that bolt with a hammer because it's gonna make me feel good about myself duff you came back to hear this or what because it was on its way back down we could hit the starter and it would help but if it's still on its way up and we hit the starter, they're going to be fighting against each other. We're going to try the starter anyway. So before when I hit the starter, you could see the front pulley, fan, etc. Try, attempt to turn like just a little bit of a grunt, kind of like when we were wiggling on the flywheel down there. And now, it's not even doing that. So I'm guessing that piston was just about up. So, I assume all that rust is from the mice coming up in there, and that cylinder was open, pushing the exhaust out. It hadn't cut quite to the top, and the mice filled that valve up full of mice stuff. Yeah, you can see that front pulley ain't even attempting to move. Man, I was pretty proud of that, too. It's bowing, not like it was before, but there is a lot of pressure on that thing. See that little ridge there, about an eighth inch? And again on that piston. And this one must be going up. I should put a mark on the crankshaft and see. I bet if we pull that off and we get a thicker shim to put in there, maybe we'll get somewhere. I think it budged. I think it did. I think we're turning it backwards, but it's turning nonetheless. So since we ran out of threads here on the old MPP, I cut us a nice big thick plate. I think this is half inch. So that'll give us something real nice and girthy like to push in on. Hopefully that'll move the piston even further. And it won't flex. Because you'll see why flex is bad later. Foreshadowing. The key to the longevity of the Morsky piston pusher is lube 
on the threads. So in case you didn't notice, these welds broke. There's a lot of pressure on that bolt right now. Everything's just kind of bowing up. That's a lot of pressure. I think this thing's junk, but we're gonna hit it with a hammer just to make ourselves feel better. And then we're gonna mix up another cola concoction. So I beat the ever living snot out of that bolt. We got a hell of a lot of tension on it. It busted the snot out of the MPP. This thing is not budging. So let's pull the MPP off there. Well, we were trying to, but you went the other way. Oh, well, bad news. We put a hole in that piston. No bueno. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's gonna end this one. <laughs> We tried real hard. We should have had a bigger plate in here. Fix what, boss man? I'm gonna fix you. The piston? Yeah. Parker says we need to fix the piston. You gonna climb up there and do it? No. Why not? I don't even know where it is. It's right here. And it's got a big hole in it from Mortsky. Look what this dang FE did to the MPP. Blew them welds right apart. Just buckled that son of a gun. There was some pressure on there. Sure enough, mouse house, full up the exhaust manifold. So we got the engine all slammed back together. And I am gonna go underneath and I gotta put the inspection cover back over the flywheel, clutch, so on and so forth. I think I'm gonna drain the oil because we know a lot of that vinegar went past the piston rings. And I know this engine's kind of junk, but I don't know what that vinegar is gonna do. And we don't wanna wreck it any more than it already is. So I'm gonna do that. Gotta jack it up, put that cover on anyway, so. We'll dump the oil. Well, we got the liquid drained out of the engine. Mostly oil, a little vinegar, a little water. Let's kick this thing outside, wash it up. Gonna try out our new electric pressure washer. Made by Tiandy. Tiandy? Teend. Teendy? What do you think, Duff? How do you pronounce it? We're gonna give this thing a shot. Hopefully it's a little bit quieter than the gasoline engine one because that one gets real annoying, don't it, Duff? All right, I'll open the door. You push that thing outside. What do you say about that? All right, I'll do it all. So it's got brakes? Yeah, right. Uh, it feels like it. Look at all these switches. Oh, I suppose one of them was for the fog light. Oh, another one too. Choke. All kinds of good stuff. I wonder if one of them 
it wasn't for that compressor. Maybe? I don't know. That thing had a bunch of switches on it, too. Better grab a block of wood. I suppose we could dump the clutch, too. Who knows? We're gonna risk it for the biscuit. Just kidding. We're taking the easy route. We're gonna use a skid steer. The beauty of a shop on a hill is when you want to kick stuff out, it just rolls down the hill. But bringing stuff in, or parking stuff outside, you gotta have a brake, or a block, or something for it to hit. I don't know how big those pans are, but they're way more than five quarts. And that thing is plumb frickin' full. But you get some uh, nice used coolant out of her. I suppose we could dump that back in. Not really any point though, is there? So all we gotta do is plug that thing into the wall, plug the hose into there, and then what duffs? You turn it on, I suppose? Where's that button at? Off. Oh, way quieter. Only splice pressure on demand. How neat is that? You look a little apprehensive. See how she works. Of a biscuit, that floor still got some paint left on it. It's too bad they left that crap in there. Of course, it rotted out here where the cross member was, so that probably doesn't have nothing to do with what was sitting inside, but what was sitting inside the cross member. That one, I'm guessing there was something sitting there, a salt bag or something. And then somebody was a little jealous that we had the pressure washer out, so they decided to go rolling some, some deer poops. Didn't you, Duff? Are you, are you ashamed of what you did? Are you hiding under there? Chasing Y-block mice. So I guess we'll be giving the Duff a bath, too. That's what I wanted to do today. Calf poop yellow and white tail poop green. She does clean up pretty good, though. Not bad, not bad at all. Isn't that rough? Wimbled and white came out real nice. For all you crew cab Chevy guys asking all the time. Still sitting there. Maybe we'll do something on it someday. T. Andy, she's pretty handy. I'm a poet, I didn't even know it. I like it because it's quiet and it's only making noise when you're squeezing the trigger. Doesn't quite have the pressure that the gas powered one has, but works pretty good for this stuff. Not so much like taking grease out of the engine bay. Speaking of the engine bay, let's take a look under here. She's uh, pretty clean under there. Just kidding, grease everywhere, but I didn't try real hard. Look at that cool champion spark plug decal. And we cleaned so much grease off, you can see he put a little horn in here for chasing the cows. It's uh, even nichied out so you can really get the full blast on. Yeah, not too bad. Like I said, that door is kind of mismatched. Must have been some body work done there. I'm guessing it was the same time that they did some body work there, all that mud come out. Can you believe that? Body guys would just. Knock that out and smear mud in there. You believe that, Duff? Whiskey dent there, one on there. Typical rot in the bottom of the tailgate. I think these Fords are pretty notorious for that. Like I said, that bed, it's got some barnacles in there, but a little bit of wire wheeling or just some light usage will clean that up pretty good. And those holes in the cross member isn't that one in the middle. Wouldn't be a bad fix. 
Marker lights are busted. A little rot down here. Cab corner seemed good. A little rust in the door. And then right there in that dog leg on this side. And of course, something got dropped on the hood there. I don't know if this hood was resprayed or what, but it's got all these little dents in here. It's got them here. It looks like those were painted over at one time. I don't know. Dual antennas. That's right. And a CB antenna. Triple antennas. That freaking windshield ain't even cracked. Should we clean out the inside duff? We better go get another trash bag. Yeah, you don't even want to go in there. It's so bad. Poor dog. <laughs> Score. Lloyd Martin Trojan signs. Glad we looked back there, huh, Duff? Apparently, Lloyd was closed for four days at one point. The inside looking pretty good. I never noticed how nice these door panels were. Armrest missing on this side. Here's our fuel valve, right tank, left seat tank. Even though there's no longer a right tank. Well, there is, but it's air. Oh yeah, that's right. We armor all the dash with high pressure tap water. Screwed up that steering wheel, didn't I? Put that on upside down. Oh, look at this. Lloyd had a temp gauge up here. That's right, 70 degrees, or 22 for those of you who read Celsiusms. Parchment headliner, uh, for sure that was a mouse entry. She does have a little, oh, don't push too hard there. Freaking mice. Air conditioned rear window. It's actually a pretty neat seat. You let her go a little too long, then duct tape it together, and then put a seat cover on it. Kind of dig the old prairie yellow. We're gonna let her air dry. Go have some lunch. We uh, used the Mortsky pry bar and the Mortsky valve adjusting tool. We got a glove box open. Sure enough, mouse house. Heck yeah. Frickin' glove box emblem. Trace Gross, Forbes, North Dakota. Tape measure. Well, there you have it, guys. You can't win them all. 71 Ford F100 off the road for 18 years. Not that long, but mice literally ruined this 360 FE. Up the tailpipe, up the Y pipe, in the exhaust manifold, and into the cylinder. Wasn't for lack of effort. This thing needs an engine, needs a rebuild, whatever you want to say it. So I guess we'll keep an eye out for an FE or if one of you guys really wants to own this thing with a bad engine. More description down in the details. Hit me up. Could be yours. So, we tried. Gave a valiant effort, what I would say. I'm just kind of excited to get this thing on the road, but I do already have my orange one over there that's a little bit nicer than this one, a little bit better optioned. And uh, we got another one sitting over there that needs a Y block stuck in it. So if we're going to swap an engine, we already got that one. And I kind of like that pickup better. Plus, you know, you got to have two orange Fords. Slick side and a bump side. I just need a dent side. So thanks for watching. Check out my other videos. Click thumbs up if you're still watching at this point. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done. As long as you're having fun. This Ford was not much fun. It's kind of fun to build a tool that didn't work. Do any of our tools work? I guess the valve puller kind of worked. The crank turner, that kind of worked. This one didn't, unless it was to put a hole in a piston. What are we gonna work on next, Duff? Step van, 55. Crew cab Chevy, 57 Ford with big tires in the back. Square body four wheel drive. 
I guess we could bring one of these ones back in here. The orange Ford, 66 four wheel drive. That blue Ford, I bet that thing will fire right up. That thing works great. Yeah. 